Hey guys, what's going on? Dr. Darog here, and today we're going to go over the steps involved when packaging a mod pack for distribution on the Technic platform. I've been asked to make a guide on this multiple times, so today we're going to make the simplest example pack possible for Minecraft 1.8 to teach you the basics of packaging your mod pack for distribution using the Technic launcher so your friends and fans can play your mod pack with no hassle. If at any time you find this video helpful, please remember to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. The first step in building any mod pack is to decide what version of Minecraft your mod pack will use. In this case, we're going to use Minecraft 1.8, so go to files.minecraftforge.net or click the info card in this video to open the site and download the recommended universal installation for Minecraft 1.8. I'm going to save the file into a folder I've created for this video called Technic Package. Call your folder whatever you'd like, but you'll need to create a folder to hold your files. From now on, I'll just call it your Mod Pack folder. Once you've downloaded the Universal Package, you should download the installer as well. You'll want to have it later. The second step in building a Mod Pack is to select what mods you want to include in your Mod Pack. Before we continue, remember to always respect mod creator's wishes about how their content should be redistributed. If they say you need permission to include their mod in a mod pack, get permission or use another mod. Speaking of finding mods, a great resource for this is mcf.li. They maintain a list of Minecraft mods that can be sorted by version availability and searched, so we're going to use their website to find mods that have been updated to 1.8. You can click the info card on the screen or find a link in the description box below to go there, and we want to obtain um, not enough items and its dependency code chicken core because it's pretty much a ubiquitous mod with effects that you can immediately test once you start a world and get in game. So go ahead and download the versions of Code Chicken Core and Not Enough Items for Minecraft 1.8 and save them to your mod pack folder. And when you're done, open up your mod pack folder. Now you're going to need to create three new subfolders in here named Bin, Mods, and Config. Rename your Universal Forge package to modpack.jar, then move it into the bin folder. Next, move the jar files for code chicken core and not enough items into the mods folder. With Forge ready and our mods selected, next we need to fire up the game client to test that our mods are working and to generate config files. If you have a favorite launcher like Magic Launcher, feel free to use that, but for this video I will just use the default Minecraft launcher to do this test. Go to the Forge installer we downloaded earlier and install the version of Forge that you're redistributing with your mod pack into the Minecraft launcher. Remember, you have to have Minecraft 1.8 downloaded to your computer and opened once in order for this to work. Also, if you're unsure why we're taking these steps, click the annotation or info card on the screen to watch a guide on loading and organizing mod packs using the Minecraft launcher. Once Forge is installed, we want to open the Minecraft launcher and select the Forge profile. Now click the New Profile button. Confirm that the source version is correct, and then tick the box next to Game Directory. Give your mod pack a testing location, such as .minecraft slash modpack slash technic package, and give the profile a name. Save the profile and select it from the drop-down box, then hit Play to open Minecraft and generate your directory. Once you hit the splash screen, you can close Minecraft. Then just navigate back to the game directory that you set for this mod pack and copy the mods from your mod packs mods folder into the testing directories mods folder. Go ahead and go back to the launcher and open your mod pack in the game client again. If everything went well, you should be able to start a world, open the inventory, and confirm that not enough items is working properly. Now if we were making a larger mod pack, here we would uh, start installing mods one at a time, but this is the only mod that we're installing in this example mod pack, So, um, and we'll go over the intricacies of mods and uh, multiple mods all together in a future video. Now once your mod pack has been sufficiently tested, you can close the window, and now you want to open up the testing folder again and go into the config folder. Here you should find that some files have been generated by our mods, namely not enough items in code chicken core. 
You can change these config files to configure the way your mods will behave, but we don't need to do that for this example. So simply copy everything that's in the testing directory's config folder and paste it back into your mod pack's previously empty config folder that you created earlier. At this point, if you're following this guide exactly, you should have a modpack.jar in the bin folder, which is your forge package. Code chicken core and not enough items in the mods folder, and some config files generated by forge, code chicken core, and NEI in the config folder. At this point, you are ready to turn your folder into one archive so that it can be uploaded to the internet and distributed as one file. Since I'm using Windows, we're going to archive the mod pack using 7-Zip, a powerful and free utility which is linked in the description box if you need to download it. Navigate to your mod pack folder and highlight all of the contents, then right click and under 7-Zip select Add to Archive. Name your mod pack folder something and make sure the file output is set to .zip so that Technic can decompress the file later when it's downloaded. At this point, your mod pack is technically complete. This archived file is ready for distribution. There are a few steps left that you will need to take in order to register the mod pack in Technic Launcher for other people to download and play. You've got to upload the file to a hosting site, which allows direct downloads, such as Dropbox, so that your friends and fans can download the mod pack. Technic does not provide hosting for mod packs, but Dropbox is one free solution. Once you've uploaded to Dropbox, make sure the permission is set to public and click share to get a link. Copy this link down, but be sure you change the DL equals zero at the end to DL equals one, as this switch will make the link a direct download link. Finally, go to technicpack.net and from the drop down menu, select create a mod pack. Fill in a name and set the Minecraft version to 1.8. I made this pack hidden from searches, but if you want to test that it works, the link is in the description below the video. Fill in a short description for your mod pack, and then accept the terms, and click Create Mod Pack. Now click Edit Mod Pack, and paste your Dropbox link into the Mod Pack Location field. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click Update Mod Pack. You can now click Back to Mod Pack, and then click Install this Mod Pack to copy the link for installation in Technic Launcher. We want to do one last test and install this mod pack in the Technic Launcher before we let anyone else download it, so open Technic and paste in the link of your mod. Let it install, then run the game and confirm that NEI is working. Finally! All of that work for just this? Okay guys, so I hope this video has helped you learn how to prepare your mod pack for distribution on the Technic platform. If you're still here at the end of the video, that means it must have helped you, so please consider hitting that thumbs up button. Next time, we're going to assemble a more complex mod pack with more mods, and if you click to subscribe now, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.